Greetings, Norwalk, California. I come in the name of the Lord. Repent and be baptized, for the kingdom of heaven is near. For all those of you here in Norwalk, California, who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you've never become a Christian, you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you today to become a Christian here in Norwalk, California. In order to do so, you need to be able to uh, confess and repent for your sins, and you need to believe that you're a sinner. You know, the world doesn't want to tell you that, that you're a sinner. They want you to tell you everything's okay, do whatever you want. But the truth is, you can't just do whatever you want. You have to obey God's laws in order to be a Christian, in order to be saved. And if you have never become a Christian, you're not obeying God's laws. You might not be a terrible person. You might not be a bad citizen. But you're still a sinner. And we're all sinners. Even Christians are sinners. Even after they become Christians, we still sin, even though hopefully less sinful and trying to be better. By the grace of God. So to begin with to start your life as a Christian and be baptized in the Holy Spirit which I will do in a moment you must say to Jesus I'm sorry for my sins thank you for dying to save me I welcome you into my heart and commit my life to you and if you can say that right now with utmost integrity sincerity and honesty then I baptize you in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit if you accept this, you are now a Christian. Welcome and congratulations. You just made the biggest, most important decision of your life. You're now my brother or sister in Christ. We're, we're in the same family. We care about each other, take care of each other. It's the biggest decision, more important than who you marry in this life. In fact, this is a marriage. You're, you're, you're uh, becoming married to God and Jesus, spiritually speaking. And if you said no to this invitation, or maybe you said wait until later, well, I want to encourage you not to wait until it's too late because the consequences are too great. Even preachers don't talk so much about it anymore because it's almost politically uh, incorrect. But the truth is, if you die without knowing Jesus, without committing your life to, to God, you will go to hell forever. And there's no second chances after you die. But if you do know Jesus and you've stayed with Jesus after your original commitment, some people fall away. But if you've stayed with Jesus till the end, then you will go to heaven forever, eternal happiness. Isn't that worth something? Isn't that worth everything? Because this life is short, my friends. Make it worth it. So for those of you who said yes, you're now a Christian, and there's a few things you should start doing. First of all, start talking to God. We call that prayer. You talk to God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's one God, three persons. We call that the Trinity. You can talk while you're driving. You can talk while you're walking with your, with your eyes open. You can also talk and pray to God in church with your eyes closed formally. It's all good as long as you're talking to God with utmost sincerity and integrity. and He wants to hear from you how you're doing how he can help you. He already knows, by the way, but he wants you to talk to him. He wants to tell you to tell him. He wants you to exercise your free will and, and build a relationship with him, with Jesus Christ, who, who died. He is the Son of God. He's, he died to save us. And so we need to be thankful. So prayer is the first step. Second step, get a Bible. That's the Word of God. That's God's uh, written word to us. We now call it the Bible, and it's a big book with lots of smaller books within it, beginning to the end, Genesis to Revelation, 
a New Testament and an Old Testament. It's, a, it's uh, not something you can read in a day or even maybe not even in a year, and depending how good a reader you are and how diligent you are. But that's not the important thing. It's not about speed reading. It's about just reading a little here and there and trying to become familiar with it and getting to know God's Word. And then third, you should find a church. Oh, by the way, before the third step, if you need a Bible, I can I can send you one free for uh, free to you if you message me on YouTube, or you can get one for a few dollars at a local bookstore. You can sometimes get one free at churches if you tell them you're a new Christian. Also, you can read them online on the internet. I mean, there's lots of different versions. I recommend. Well, I personally, I like the uh, King James Version, but it's harder to read than uh, some of the newer versions. So you might not want to go to the King James right away, but uh, maybe the new King James. And then uh, third, you should get a uh, you know, find a church, and I recommend that you find a church that upholds uh, traditional values, meaning one man, one woman marriage, and also defends unborn life. I believe God is against abortion. I believe he wants us to protect uh, the uh, unborn babies, those who are weak and defenseless, who cannot take care of themselves, which also includes widows, elderly, anybody really who, who can't take care of themselves. We need to be helping out, protecting, defending, not just not just uh, Christians, but that especially fellow Christians, but also anybody. Even to the point... Uh, well, you know, we're told we should die for others. We can even die for others for their sake. As Christ did for us. But in many ways, die is also uh, spiritually. We sometimes die, die to sin and we die to uh, things of this world. So it's not always a literal die. Anyways, we're getting beyond uh, the scope of this message. So you find a church with a good preacher who clearly teaches the Bible and also a congregation that cares about you and will uh, encourage you and pray for you as you begin your life as a new Christian and grow and become more mature and maybe even become an uh, evangelist, pastor, or some other type of leader in the church. That's it for now. I'll, I mean, that's your. those are the beginning steps. You take those steps and keep with it, stick to it, You'll become a great spiritual person in Christ. I'll be praying for you. God be with you and bless you. Message me on YouTube if you have any questions. And Merry Christmas here in Norwalk, California. Now I'm already in Artesia, by the way. So Artesia, if you're listening, this is for you too.